The Today's Word Podcast with Rick Pena. Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pena, and I bring you Today's Word for June 22nd, 2017. I'm teaching a series on the power of God, the supernatural power of God, and I'm emphasizing the love of God. So I've been teaching on the love of God for weeks, and I want to go continue to flow in that vein as we go back to 1 John uh, chapter 4 today. We've been looking at 1 John chapter 3. We're going to look at chapter four today with a message entitled resting in God's love. You will never really embrace the power of God until you know God loves you, until you know that he loves you, that he never turns back on you and that he wants to use you simply because he loves you. So I believe that love is the key to the supernatural. So we've been learning about the love of God from the apostle of love. So the apostle John, he wrote a gospel that bears his name. And in that gospel, he referred to himself as the disciple Jesus loved. He was like, hey, I'm the, I'm the guy Jesus loved. I'm, I was Jesus' favorite, right? So he, he, he fully embraced the love of God towards him. And then decades later, when he's in his 90s, he wrote three letters. Uh, then he also wrote the revelation of Jesus Christ. But those three letters contain some of the richest teaching in the Bible on God's love. So we've been looking at the first letter, 1 John, and we kind of focused in on chapter 3 for a while. I want us to cross over into chapter 4. I'm going to read for us uh, 1 John chapter 4, verses 1 through 6 from the Message Bible. And really, once again, the title of today's message is Resting in God's Love. You're going to see here that John warns us about some things that happen in this world. But when you're resting in God's love, when you know who you are, when you know who's you, whose you are, which is more important, when you know that you're in God and God is in you and that God loves you, you have nothing to fear. So this is what he said. He says, he's writing. He said, my dear friends, don't believe everything that you hear. Carefully weigh and examine what people tell you. Not everyone who walks and talks about God comes from God. There are, they are a lot of there are a lot of lying preachers loose in the world. I laugh, I'm sorry, I kind of laughed about that, but it's true. There are a lot of lying preachers loose in the world. That's what the, the Bible says here in the Message Bible Translation. Here's how you test the genuine spirits that come from God. Everyone who confesses openly his faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who came actually in the flesh as a flesh and blood person, comes from God and belongs to God. And everyone who f- refuses to confess Faith in Jesus has nothing in common with God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist that you have heard that was coming. Well, it's here sooner than we thought. So my dear children, he says, you come from God and you belong to God and you have already won the victory over those false teachers for the spirit that is in you is far greater, far stronger than anything that is in the world. Now, these people belong to uh, these people belong to the Christ denying world. So this is not us. He's talking about the people that are in the world. They talk the world's language and the world eats it up, he says. But we come from God and we belong to God. So anyone who knows God understands us and listens to us. The person who has nothing to do with God, of course, will not listen to us. This is an, another test. For telling the spirit of truth from the spirit of deception. He's saying, listen, we're in the world. We're not of the world, but we still live in this world. And in this world, there's going to be people who are lying. There's going to be in this world, people who are operating in the spirit of deception. In this world, people that operate with the spirit of the Antichrist. And there's going to be people that are leading people astray. There's going to be false teachers who claim to be from God, but not from God. They're not from God at all. And this is how you know. This is how you differentiate them. Jesus Christ is the answer. So those who accept Jesus... Yes, these people come from God. Those who reject Jesus, they don't come from God. But all of this is is just kind of stacked in the middle of a letter about God's love. So what does this mean to you today about the love of God? And what does this mean to you today about the power of God? So there's a lot in those six verses, obviously. I could probably teach on that for weeks, but I won't. I'm just going to seek to glean a few nuggets this morning as it relates to the context of this series. So I have four things to share with you on this morning. Here we go. Number one. There are false spirits and false teachers in this world. Like, so let's be very clear about that. Don't be naive enough to think that everything and everyone is of God. Not everyone who is with you is for you. Even people who claim to be from God, they're going to be false teachers. 
The Bible says that there are people who claim to be from God, but they're not from God at all. So those who openly confess Jesus as Lord, who unashamedly acknowledge that Jesus was born of a virgin, lived a sinless life, suffered, bled and died, rose again from the dead on the third day in the fulfillment of the scriptures, ascended up into heaven and is coming back again in glory to judge the living and the dead. Those who confess Jesus as Lord, who openly acknowledge Jesus, then the Bible says that those people are from God and those who don't accept Jesus are not from God. Now, I know that's not popular today. It's not popular to draw lines in the sand. I know today we're supposed to be nice and, and we're, we're supposed to like, you know, people want to want to um, water down the gospel and like, oh, everything is cool. Every, God loves everybody. God does love. God loves everyone everywhere. And I've been preaching that. But that doesn't mean that everyone is saved. Those of us who, ex who have accepted Jesus as Lord are in God and God is in us and we're of God and we belong to God. And those who have not are not. That doesn't mean that 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 God doesn't love them. And they just are not yet, which is why we need to share the love of God with them, which is why we need to lift up Jesus. Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. But we have to be clear and unashamed of the gospel. You can't be ashamed of the fact that Jesus is Lord and those who are in Christ are in God and those who are not in Christ are not in God, period. The Bible is very clear on that. That's not that's not being demeaning to anyone. That's preaching the gospel and loving everyone and telling the truth in love. Number two, those of us who are born again belong to God. Now, you must know if you're born again that you belong to God, that you are not your own. I mean, literally, you belong to him. He bought you with a price. The Bible says he redeemed you. He paid for you. He bought you with a price. And that price was the blood of his own son, the blood of Jesus. So when you know that you're in God and that God is in you and that you belong to him. Now, I belong to somebody. I belong to God. So I have nothing to fear because when I'm in this world, no matter what comes up against me, I belong to God. So he's going to protect me. My protection comes from him, which leads me to number three. The spirit of God is greater than any other spirit in this world. So I have nothing to fear because I'm in God and God is in me and he is greater than any spirit in this world. I don't have to obtain a victory. Jesus obtained the victory for me. So I'm not striving to obtain victory. I'm not praying for victory. I'm praying from a position of victory. I'm praying from a position of victory because Jesus obtained the victory for me. I'm not striving to obtain victory. I am seeking to receive and maintain the victory Jesus already obtained. So the Bible says here in our text that if you're in God, you belong to God and you already have the victory because God gave us the victory through his son, Christ Jesus. Jesus, our Lord. The text also says that greater is he, God, who is in us than he, Satan, who is in the world. So, so the greater one lives on the inside of me. Now, I'm not greater, but the greater one is in me, right? So my, my confidence, my, my strength, my power doesn't come from me. It comes from him. So God, it, Paul was trying to explain this. He said, God put his treasure in earthen vessels so that the excellency of the power could be from God and not from us. So I am the container, but I'm not the content. He is the content. I'm simply the container and I am a carrier of God. You are a carrier of God. So yes, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And so the greater one lives on the inside of us. The greatness doesn't come from us. The greatness comes from him and we are a carrier of him. So what do we have to be afraid of? We have nothing to fear. When you know that God is on you and in you and with you and for you, then you have nothing to fear. You enter every day with fearless confidence because you know you're in God and he's the greater one and the greater one is in you and he loves you and he will never turn his back on you. Which leads me to my fourth and final point. Faith works best in rest. Let me say that again. Faith works best in rest. You got to enter into God's rest. When you know you're in Christ and Christ is in you and you know that God will never turn his back on you because he loves you, then yes, now you can rest. And faith does his best work in rest. Faith doesn't work when you're in fear because fear cancels out faith and faith cancels out fear. Faith doesn't work when you're in doubt because you need to learn to, to have faith uh, in your faith and God's faith in you and doubt your doubts. So, so doubt is, is, the, is diminishing your faith. But when you rest, when you enter into God's rest and you know that God loves you and that God wants to use you simply because he loves you and that he wants to manifest his power through you simply because he loves you and that he wants to reach the world through you because he loves you, because he extended his love to you. And now his love wants to flow through you. 
then you can enter into God's rest because at that point, your life is not about you. It's all about him. And when you take the pressure off of you, when you take the spotlight off of you, then you don't have this pressure to perform and you're not focused on you. You're focused on him. You can enter into God's rest. And that's where the power comes from. Resting in God fuels your faith. It starves your doubts and it enables you to tap into God's supernatural power. So I'm talking about resting in God's love. Now you have something to do in this. I want you to agree with me and, and seal the deal by declaring this over your own life. Repeat after me in faith. Say this. Say, Father, this is a year of great victory for me. I know you love me. Now, Jesus loved me enough to die for me. I have accepted Jesus as my Lord. I belong to you. Now, I am in you and you are in me. Greater is he that is in me which is you, Father, than he that is in the world. So you already obtained the victory. I have nothing to fear. I know you love me, so I enter into your rest. I live by faith, and my faith is fueled by your unending love towards me. I declare this by faith. In Jesus' name, amen. This is today's word. Apply it and prosper. If you're not getting these messages, go to todaysword.org. Look on the right-hand side of the website. There's a big subscribe button. Subscribe. Get the messages. They're going to be a blessing to you. I know you know someone who should watch this video, so please share this video with your friends. If you're watching on Facebook Live, share it right there on your page, on your timeline. If you're watching on YouTube, like the video, share it with your friends. Let's get the word out that, yes, God does love everyone everywhere, but only those who have, who have accepted Jesus as Lord belong to God, have the greater one living on the inside of them. And those of us who have, we have nothing to fear. We can rest in God's love. Go, know that you're loved. And so as you enter into this day, walk in God's power. God bless you.